The Catholic Archbishop of Abuja Diocese, Most Reverend Ignatius Kayigama, has said that the recent pronouncement by the Vatican reportedly endorsing same-sex marriage is a serious test for the maturity of the Catholic Church. While expressing optimism that the Church will pass the test with distinction, he calls on Nigerians to hold on to their faith with great tenacity and not allow arguments or controversies distract or confuse them, especially in the light of the document about the blessing of those of same-sex orientation. He says many Catholics are very worried that there is going to be a deviation from the teaching of the church and marriage, expressing optimism that it will not happen. The cleric reassures that marriage is still that exclusive, stable, and indissoluble union between a man and a woman naturally open to conceiving children, and the church remains firm in teaching that marriage, that marriage can be contracted only between one woman and one man. All right, for more on this, let's bring in the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, Dalsi's Most Reverend Ignatius Keigama. Uh, so glad that you could join us tonight. Welcome to News Night. Thank you. And compliments of the season. Same to you. Yeah, Happy very Christmas. Merry Christmas, yeah. Thank very you. worrisome development. Yes. I mean, uh, where would this have come from? That. You know, the Catholic Church, the papacy, will be saying, bless the same-sex marriage. Traditionally, in Africa or in Nigeria, we don't subscribe to that. And when you look at the religiosity of the situation, of the faith of the Catholics or the Christians, it's not there in the Bible. Is the Pope dancing to pressures of the West? Um, a hurried reading of the Pope's declaration would give you that conclusion, blessing same-sex marriage, and that is not the issue. If you read the document thoroughly, you would find out that the Pope is not actually saying people who are of the same sex could present themselves to the church and the priest would bless them. That is certainly not the case. And the issue of marriage is definite, it's conclusive. It has been said again and again that marriage, as far as the Christian faith is concerned, is between a man and a woman. Even our African traditions, our cultures, you know, we know that is it. So there is no argument about this. I am a priest and I stand by my priestly commitment to ensure that we implement marriage that is based on man and on woman. the doctrine absolutely so so i think it is a hasty generalization to say the pope has approved same-sex marriage that the, is what reading then did it the, out of context yeah what then did the pope approve what did he approve well the pope has been talking about mercy and even declared a year of mercy and the pope has such a global um view of things and his approach to humanity is that of Christ, that the tender, loving care of Christ. The point he is trying to make is we shouldn't exclude anyone, that we should be open to embrace saints or sinners. And so the category we are talking about, people who say they have the same sex orientation, are human beings. We know that our orientation, as far as we are concerned, is not correct. The Pope has said that it is not um, right that a man and a man would say they would marry. And we can't bless such a union. We can't bless sin. We regard it as a deviation. And so um, we need to understand that um, we are not rejecting um, any group of persons or individuals. The Pope says, an individual comes to you as a priest and asks for a blessing. Spontaneously, I give the blessing. I have been to the airport, I just came from somewhere, and so many people were bowing and asking, Bishop, bless us, Bishop, bless us. I don't ask, 
Are you a good yeah, person? Gay Are you gay or what? Yeah. No, no. I just mm -hmm. give the blessing spontaneously. But when we come to the liturgical context, mm -hmm. where two people come and say we are gay and we want to be blessed so that we remain a couple, no. we don't accept that. And the word couple is even not right. Mm. Because couple means people are being together and mm. doing things like married people do and so on. So it's not right to call them couples. So, uh, but if they come individually and ask for help, we want to know God better, we want to live the right way, help us. Definitely a blessing will do them no harm. And it will not uh, convey a wrong impression yes, I think that the, the marriage is being uh, yes, consecrated. I think, you know, we are very sensitive about this. Mm. The moment you hear about same sex, you say, wow, this is not possible in Africa. It's not possible in our culture. Yeah. And then when the Pope says you should bless or they, are, they could be blessed, then I think that is what creates the confusion. Mm -hmm. For us, the sanctity mm. of marriage, marriage and all this is so serious that to give, to give a blessing to mm. something that is a deviation, a moral deviation and anything it's not uh, right and our people have every reason to feel agitated yes. to feel angry and uncomfortable about the use of this language mm. and blessing is so is taken so serious mm. that we don't have to just apply it anyhow but we must have the mind of christ the tenderness of christ where he said he's not come for the righteous but yeah, for sinners exactly anyway. so we must not be too exclusive we try to win them over and we have many people i go to the prison for instance i go i celebrate mass there mm. i help them they are in difficulties we attend to their needs they are not all saints some have committed very serious crimes mm. i just uh, visited the uh, those who are being trafficked um last uh, on christmas day i was there to greet them and I have the internally displaced people, those who are suffering. We always try to reach out to the poor, the needy, mm -hmm. and those that are even excluded by society. And you have many, many. those who are drunkards, those who are prostitutes, those are, they are supposed to be the ones we go for to embrace them and bring them closer to, to God Christ. so that they know God mm -hmm. and then we shall all together be saved. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Archbishop, let me... Um, still hold on to this same-sex marriage and the issue of the LGBTQ, you know, and how the West, America and the West are trying to foster it on, uh, on Africa, in Uganda, you know, America has withdrawn its aids and support because they are not passing a bill. We saw that in uh, during uh, former President Jonathan's uh, term, where Barack Obama's administration wanted uh, that bill, the gay rights bill, to be passed and the rest. How do you react to this kind of second new colonialism sexually here? Mm, yeah. How do you react? How mm. does the Catholic Church or the body of Christ generally yeah, in Africa? It's an ideological colonization. Mm. We have suffered a colonization before now this is ideological they come up with so many things and they want you to follow just because you need their help you need their money and all that i'm so happy that we have uh, very good leaders who really can tell the difference during the time of president jonathan i remember the bill was was passed to, to to reject yes in its entirety yeah. anything to do with same-sex marriage mm. and all that even if there is a lot of aid attached to this you know they were ready to forego it and mm. we praised them i was the president of the bishops conference then yeah. and i remember writing a letter endorsing what the president has done and in many parts of africa this is also the case and we have to just keep at it. It is not our culture. It is not what we like. It's not our lifestyle. And if the West want to go wayward and do unnatural things and do what we consider deviations, that is, that, is their, that is theirs. But mm. as Africans, we have our culture, we have our religious convictions, and we have uh, morality and therefore nobody They should shouldn't foist it yeah, on no, us. No, no, it is wrong. Let, yes, let's, let's just quickly look at the state of the nation, national issues, the year is going out, you know, insecurity, look at the mayhem. You you came from 
the plateau dances and the rest, you know, you were there for several years. Look at the carnage uh, uh, on Christmas Eve, more than 200. It's been going on. The, you can count close to a thousand people who've been killed between Mangu, between uh, Barikin Ladi and the uh, Bokos and the rest. And yet the security uh, agencies say they don't know them, they don't know the people. Is that believable to it, the average Nigerian? It is a tragedy of monumental proportions. And that this happens again and again, it surprises me. Yes, this touches me so particularly because I was the Archbishop of Jos for close to 20 years. Those people attacked are my people. The areas attacked the areas I was looking over and you know, pastorally taking care of. And that this happens again and again. I, I, since 2009, we have had these violence leading to killings, very reckless killings and irresponsible uh, taking of life. And this, is, and this, ha this has been happening. And today, is, we're in 2023, almost finishing, and we haven't found a solution that we cannot develop or evolve a security system that can address this issue. It surprises me. And look at the various branches of security agencies we have. How is it possible? And it is amazing. And we can't explain. And when these things happen, we are the recipients of all the negatives associated with it. Yes. People come to us because they have nowhere to go to. And I always ask the answer. It's not enough to give them bread, yam, and all that. What can we do substantially to address this position, this situation? And is something wrong with our government? Are they having the political will to solve this problem? If not so, why should this be happening over and over? And that we lack the, the sophistication to confront these criminals, that they are better than and ours and better, better trained than when, can when, have better strategies. When Nigeria has just promoted yeah. about 100 uh, yeah. uh, uh, officers yeah. in the uh, armed forces to yeah. the rank of uh, two-star generals. Yeah. And I, I say, what is really wrong? And I have not got an answer. And we keep alienating people from Nigeria. Because I go abroad and people want to visit, but they are always very, very concerned. Mm. Is it safe? Are they going to be alive if they visit and all that? Now when they look uh, at the kind of yeah. barbarism yeah, that... Yeah. Uh, and, in and just look at that picture. I yeah. saw that vi video yeah. of a with woman the with a yeah. child. With, on yeah, the back, strapped to the back. And, and then, you know, blood all over. The child is crying. It doesn't strike anybody's humanity that you can raise your cutlass or whatever you use to butcher a fellow human being before a very tender child like that. A toddler. Oh my God, this is something awful, or terribly condemnable. Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. Well, thank you so very much, uh, Archbishop Ignatius Gama, the uh, Bishop of uh, the Abuja Diocese, Catholic uh, Diocese. Sorry, we don't have enough time. I mean, I would have uh, taken you uh, up more on some other national issues. But thanks, all the same. And uh, happy New Year in advance. We hope the New Year will be certainly better and free of bloodshed and well, all these useless Ni violence. Niger Nigeria is a praying country, and we believe that when uh, you and... Uh, we will do your, our work. We'll keep your, praying. Your fellow bishops, you know. But the pray. government should do the action, the acting, <laughs> because we, we need action. I mean, prayer, we'll, prayer, we'll, and good works must go I together. Know, we must start bringing them uh, closer to God now. Exactly. This is <laughs> all very right. correct. Yes. Thank you very all right, much. Yeah, Thank you.